Hey everybody, um, continuing on from our last video, we're going to start talking a bit about uh, dynamic web development. Some of the uh, languages and technologies involved with web development are PHP, MySQL, sometimes pronounced MySQL, uh, JavaScript, AJAX, XML, JSON. These are all terms that you'll become familiar with while working in dynamic web development. And all of these would be considered languages with the exception of Ajax. Ajax is more of a concept uh, and way of, of doing things uh, with JavaScript. Ajax allows you to get dynamic content without reloading a page. So you get that effect that uh, we used to only be able to get with Flash, where the website starts feeling more like an actual desktop application whereas there's no refreshing and things happen you click on a button and page loads without the browser having to reload a new page uh, and so on so it's important to note the differences between some of these languages uh, the main difference is, is uh, where the where the language is processed uh, and server side and client side server side would be php and mysql these are both installed and run on the server they're also read on the server so when a php page loads the server processes that php um, and then returns it back to the client client side languages such as javascript xml and json um, these are all kind of uh, embedded within the browser. The browser knows how to read JavaScript and handle XML and JSON, etc., or at least most modern browsers do. Um, and, and just to be clear, client would be uh, the user, whoever is looking at a web page. For instance, if you were looking at YouTube right now to see this video, you would be the client. Your computer would be considered the client, um, whereas the server would be YouTube's server. So I'm going to walk through the kind of flow of information here when working with dynamic websites. So there's three main components to this, this diagram here and this flow. Um, using YouTube right now as an example, uh, as I mentioned, you guys are the client right now. You're looking at YouTube. You have it loaded up on your page. Um, there is the internet service provider. Uh, that would be your internet service provider, the, the, the company who, uh, or organization who's connecting you to the internet, and then the server. Um, now, this model could change a little bit depending on whether the server is housed uh, locally on your computer, um, but this is kind of just a, a general um, model for dynamic web development. On the client, as we've mentioned, the the browser, JavaScript, XML, these are these are all handled on the client. Um, and with the server, servers running server software such as Apache, um, and then handling the PHP and the MySQL, uh, among other things that uh, can be run on the server. Um, and Ajax kind of rests in between these two. Uh, Ajax, like I said, is not a language. It's more of a concept, and it can kind of be um, related to you either side. You can utilize Ajax to pull content in uh, using JavaScript and XML or JSON, or you could use Ajax to um, use JavaScript to pull a PHP page, which retrieves data from a MySQL database. Um, and, and in that sense, you would you would need the server. Um, however, you can do dynamic websites without needing to have server-side technology. You could do it strictly with the JavaScript and XML, uh, JSON, or any other um, configurations like that. However, the more popular way to do this is utilizing databases rather than strictly relying on documents, uh, XML documents or JSON documents, which we'll explain a little later. Um, so what happens from the moment, uh, let's say you typed in youtube.com and hit go. The moment you hit go, 
your computer is going to connect to your ISP, which then connects you to the internet, and then it uh, hits the server where the where YouTube is housed. We don't know if YouTube is using PHP. In fact, I don't think they are, but we're just using them in this example. So say that they are using PHP. The client hits go in their browser, hits the ISP. ISP connects you to the internet, which then connects you to the server, YouTube server, and it's going to pull the data using PHP, MySQL, however they have it set up. And then it's going to send you back, send back the data through to your ISP and then back to your computer where the browser um, is going to handle JavaScript, XML, and JSON. Um, depending on how you have things configured, um, some of the JavaScript may happen before the PHP loads, um, but, uh, and vice versa. So, but uh, again, we'll, we'll get into that a little later. So, the thing we need to discuss now is how are we going to house our projects from now on, our dynamic website? Um, we have two options. We could do a local or remote server, but we're going to need a server. If we want to handle PHP and MySQL, um, you're not going to be able to view PHP documents on your home computer without a server. So this can get a little tricky, but it's important to know because you don't want to start working on on projects and thinking you can just open them up in a browser like you have been uh, in the past with your HTML and just previewing it in the browser because that's just not going to work. You need to have a server. Um, luckily server software, it, some of the most popular software like Apache is free. It's generally pretty easy to install using a service such as uh, XAMPP which is provided by an organization called Apache Friends at apachefriends.org. The other option is to pay for a remote server. This can be the, the more expensive route, um, but if you're going to uh, host a professional or you know a, a client's website, you're going to want to have a remote server mo more likely. Um, you're not going to want to house that on your local server. Most times what uh, us developers do is we have a, a local server uh, here, here, either on our own machine or within our network here. Uh, for instance, I do. I, have, I actually have a couple servers running here at home on several different computers, um, some Windows, some Linux, uh, and even working on a Mac server right now. But we're not going to use those for the final product. I use it for development quick quick and dirty development, uh, testing, previewing, and such, and uh, you know that rare occasion where I can't get on the internet, I still need to view my, my documents. Uh, so we have that set up, but we're still going to connect to the remote server to put the final product up. If you're going to have a local server, uh, you pretty much only need a computer, uh, an operating system such as Windows, or Ubuntu, Linux, uh, or OS X for the Mac, and you need server software such as Apache and an internet connection. So considering most computers come with an operating system installed, the really all you need is server software and an internet connection. And the server software is free, the internet connection I'm assuming you already have, so it's not necessarily free, but you've got that covered. Um, a lot of times you can just really grab an old computer that you might have sitting around collecting dust. Um, you don't want to use too old of a computer because the the processing and speed of the computer is important because it's going to determine uh, whether there's any bottlenecks in your your speed. Um, but um, Really, you could you could use an old, uh, even maybe a Pentium 4 machine, I think would be about as low as I'd want to go at this point. One of my servers uh, is running on a, on a Pentium 4 machine. Uh, for a remote server, you're going to want a either a standard hosting account, which is generally the, the least expensive of them all. Uh, usually, I, mean, I think you can get hosting anywhere from you know, a couple bucks a month to 50 bucks a month, depending on what you need. Um, another route would be considered 
virtual private server, which is kind of like having your own server set up um, at a remote location. For instance, uh, most of my hosting happens with a company called HostGator. They're pretty popular. Um, if I were to buy a virtual private server service from them, I have space on one of their machines and the space is set up to almost run um, like it's my own machine, even though I'm sharing it with other people. Uh, hosting accounts are run kind of like that too, except um, it's really just a shared account. There's no um, there's no tools that uh, give it the um, appearance and, and usage uh, of, of a independent machine. Uh, the next step up would be a dedicated server, which is having your own machine set up so say we bought a dedicated server service from HostGator we would have a machine dedicated to us uh, nobody else uses it nobody else shares this machine this is ours um, and we have full access to it this is usually the more expensive route I think plans generally start at, at around 100 120 dollars a month um, there's some other services out there becoming popular like cloud hosting and um, the the idea of elastic hosting where the amount of resources uh, you're using can change this is pretty good for a website that's getting a lot of traffic and and but it varies um, so you're not having to pay a large amount right away um, and you're also not paying a large amount if you're not getting a lot of traffic um, this is all down the road. Um, if you do cho choose to use a remote server, um, for instance, for working on this project here, I would definitely recommend just getting a general hosting account. Um, there are free ones out there. I don't recommend them because they usually involve you having to have ads running on your site. Um, so I, if you're going to pay for one, if you're going to sign up for a hosting service, I, I would definitely pay the uh, couple bucks a month. Um, we are working on setting up a hosting server for you guys, our viewers, um, to give you a little bit of uh, space free of charge. But until then, uh, these are your options. Whether you're doing a local server or a remote server, um, general operating systems are going to be Windows or Linux. Um, a little more rare would be OSX. Granted, uh, on a local machine, you can do whatever you want. I mean, you can make that decision. You could you could run a Mac server. Um, however, most of the hosting companies out there are pretty partial to Linux or Windows, and and more than anything, Linux. As far as server software, you've heard me say the the term Apache here quite often now. Apache is pretty much the standard and the most used server software, one, because it's pretty solid, and two, because it is uh, free. And uh, there's a service called AMP or XAMP um, from an organization, as I mentioned before, called Apache and Friends or ApacheFriends.org, and they kind of bundle up Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl and install it all. Uh, for you and this is definitely the the recommended way to go at this point installing Apache on your own can be a little bit of a daunting and, and complicated task uh, it's really more for advanced users who, who need to set up um, properties that are not really out of the box but for setting up a, a nice testing server XAMPP is is perfect uh, or LAMP for Linux or MAMP for Mac which is far as I understand, I think they've actually just kind of encompassed everything within the XAMPP uh, term here at this point. The Something we need to consider if we're working on a local machine um, is if, if you want to have your local server connected to the internet or available through the internet, you need to have an IP address. Now, if you do have an internet um, connection through an ISP, you do have an IP address. So technically, you could be accessible from the web and run your own web server. 
However, majority of people who are residential customers are going to have what's called a dynamic IP address, which basically means the IP address changes. Uh, when it changes, who really knows? It's all up to the um, the uh, ISP and how they set things up. Uh, your IP address could change every five minutes or it could change every two months. Um, who knows? So that that makes it kind of complicated to you to run a consistent web server if your IP address is going to change because you need to tell your DNS server, um, which we'll talk about uh, later, but the uh, DNS server will um, direct the domain name to the proper IP address. So say we type in the digitalcraft.com. When that's typed in, it's going to check the uh, domain server and check the name servers and find out what IP address it needs to go to because a domain name is really more of a shortcut. It's not the actual location of your website or your server. The actual location is, a, is an IP address, but uh, smart people learned uh, early on here that uh, remembering IP addresses uh, or a number, you know, it looks more like a phone number than anything, is, gonna, is not as fancy or memorable as having a nice um, domain name, um, something to remember by. So we use these domain names to point to the uh, IP address of the server. Um, I think anymore these days the ISPs don't give out static IP address to residential customers. It's usually a paid service and you generally have to be a business if you are a residential com uh, customer, then you don't necessarily have to worry um, about getting a static IP address. You, there's ways around it, and there's a um, organization called DynDNS who offers a IP updater, IP uh, address updater, and a DNS server to help you work around the dynamic situation. Um, and what this does is say you sign up to one of their more basic packages which I think is about $30 a, a year somewhere around that in that area which is pretty nice uh, pretty good deal um, and what it will do is say you, you register a domain name for about 10 15 bucks a year um, for instance say uh, the digitalcraft.com and then we sign up for DynDNS and we tell DynDNS that we want the digitalcraft.com 2.2 our um, home server here so that people all throughout the web can type in the digital craft and it will load our server here at home and how it handles this is they have the IP address updater client running kind of in the background on your server and anytime your ISP decides to change your IP address the updater catches that and sends a message to the DNS server and says hey swap out the IP address, send it here now. So really outside of that little tiny gap uh, when the IP uh, updater has to send that information to the to the uh, DNS server, that's really the only time I think you would notice that uh, your website is not hosted on a static IP and um, so you shouldn't have much of a problem with that. There, there are some some downsides to this but uh, especially for just using it for a development or testing server that you you can, that you might want access to remotely from other locations this is definitely a good way to go it's pretty expensive uh, sorry inexpensive and that concludes my talk about dynamic development um, I really just wanted to get this out here I know it's not uh, as fun to just you know chat about terms and, and concepts so the uh, next video we start getting our hands dirty again with code but uh, I've definitely been getting a lot of feedback that uh, people like that I don't assume everybody knows everything so I thought I'd kind of take the sidebar here to go a little more in depth on how dynamic development works and hopefully get everybody kind of on the, on the same page here when I was first introduced to dynamic development uh, back in college uh, we we only spent uh, about a week on it and really all we learned was the the idea of it the fact that we can load content um, 
um, dynamically and we don't have to make you know 20 different web pages to have a website uh, so it's very exciting but yet they didn't give us enough, enough time to really learn how this works and and what server side and client side means and things like that and databases so I don't want to leave everybody hanging there and I figured this this video would help out a little bit um, and anybody who needs any extra help with this feel free to to email me um, I have been getting a lot of requests to help out with uh, code lately which I'm more than happy to do um, as long as everybody realizes that I do have a full-time job and a family so um, whether I can get to it quickly or not is uh, not something I can promise but I will promise to to look at it when I can um, look for the next video here shortly and that's when we're going to start getting our hands dirty with some PHP. Thanks.